Well, we could probably just spend the rest of the morning celebrating the sunshine through the windows and the glory of God and, and what he does. How many people here ever get visions when you're praying, pictures from the Lord, anyone? Okay. I think it's good that we start to ask those kinds of questions and, and then be glad in what the Lord does for us and with us and just to know one another in, in that way, to know one another in the way that the Lord works in us and through us. And uh, it, it amazes me every time that the Lord blesses me in that way. It's, uh, it's special. Can we receive that, that God loves us in that way? It's special when he gives us things like that. I mean, it's, he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to, but he loves us. There's times in our lives where uh, we don't know what's coming next. Well, that's pretty much every day when I wake up. <laughs> Same for you. There used to be a, a show when I was a kid that I would watch and uh, it was called Thundercats. Now, probably a lot of you may not remember that or know what I'm talking about, but there is actually a point in what, in what this is going to. In the show, there was a guy, and I had to look it up. His name was lion -O, and he had this sword, and he was kind of the leader of this pack of cats. And, and with the sword, and... and Again, we have a lot of things that we could pick apart at this, but with the sword, he was able to say, give me sight beyond sight, and he was able to see kind of into the future and see enemy attacks. He was able to see where his allies were so that he would know, you know how they could fight together and, and be successful. In that, God has given us gifts he has given us abilities. He has given us insight. Now, I don't want to connect the sword and all that, the parts and pieces, but what I want to say is that what we sometimes have seen or heard that we could easily say that was a cartoon, that was a kid's thing, we declare, and, and we have to declare in the Lord Jesus that these are real abilities. They are real gifts from God. And let's not deny the power of God. Let's not deny when he shows us things in our dreams. Let's not deny the power of God when you are inclined to pray for someone and then you go and pray for that person and they receive from the Lord. Let's not, let's not lower any of this when God shows you something about your life, my life that I need to change or that he's glad with me, and he's saying, good job. We are blessed to be the people of God. We are blessed. And God says that we are to live by faith, not by what we see. Yet even at times, he blesses us with the ability to see and to know This morning, we are going to be looking in the book of Genesis in chapter 19 is where we're going to start. And I don't want to read through a whole lot of, of this story. It's, it's a story that we're going to go to because this week as, as I was spending some time in prayer, the Lord gave me a vision. He gave me a, a picture. And in that, he said, don't look back. And let me explain the, 
the picture of what the Lord gave me, and then we'll look at a little bit of, of the story of, of Lot. The Lord gave me a picture. It was kind of, you might be able to link it to seeing a dog on a chain. And, and uh, sometimes when, when, do- when cars go by or when people come close, you know, that dog gets a running start and it goes to, to chase after that car, to leap at that person, and yet gets yanked back. And it was a picture of, uh, of a person with a binding on their ankle and a chain connected. I didn't see where or to what. And that person understood that they could walk to a point and then they were trapped. They were chained up. They were not able to go beyond that place. And the Lord said, I've broken the barriers. I've broken the chain. And it was... It was so clear as he showed me this that that person started walking again and before the chain even got tight, there was a resistance to taking that last step because they, were, they knew this is coming, that, that barrier is there and it's, it's going to hold me back. And the Lord again said, don't get held back. Don't allow the barriers to hold you back. And it was to that point where finally the person realized that it's not there anymore and I can go forward. I can move where before I couldn't move. I can do what before I couldn't do. I can, you fill in the blank in that regard. Because I I know that God has broken down some barriers in our lives. Maybe it was last week. Maybe it was prior to that. Maybe it was this morning. Maybe it's coming. But the Lord wants us to be people that are not held back by what used to hold us back. Fear, if fear has held you back, let's ask God to break us of it. Be set free. And then don't allow, you know, our muscle memory helps us in many ways where we can do things and, and it's a good thing. But it can also become a detriment. It can become a negative for us if we start to spiritually allow the things to hold us back once the Lord has set us free. We don't have to be held back anymore. In the story In Genesis 19, the story of Lot, we are, the the story is set in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, and and they're side by side, and, and this is a deplorable place. It's a place that God is ready to destroy. The sin is so thick, it's almost palatable. It's almost like you can walk in and just sense the evil. In the, in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And if we looked back into chapter 18, we hear a conversation. There's a conversation going between Abram and God. And there is this, it's, it's as much of a debate as you probably see that God will have with, with a man. And Abraham is asking for God to save the righteous in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. He's asking, first he says, if there are 50 righteous, would you save them? Would you not destroy the city until they are free? And they work, Abraham works his way down all the way to 10 people. God, if there are 10 people that are righteous in the, in the city, would you wait and let them be free? And God agrees. And so God sends two angels to the city. And picking up in verse 12. And then the men said to Lot, these two men, they come in. They're speaking to Lot. Lot helps them to come into the city, to come into his house. And the men of the city 
who have unnatural desires in their heart and on their mind. They come banging, banging on the door. Let us in. Let us have these two men that we saw come into your house. And Lot goes through some other options that these men could take. And they say, no, we want these two men that came in. And Lot says, no. And once again, we see God work in a supernatural way, and, and he strikes the men of the city with blindness, and he confuses them. And it's at this point that these two men tell Lot that they, they need to get out of this city. Lot, his wife, his daughters. Lot goes and he tries to talk with his son-in-laws. We don't know for sure if these son-in-laws were married to more of Lot's daughters or if they were betrothed to the ones that he had in his house, but that's kind of a side note. The key here is that God is on a rescue mission, just like we were singing about this morning. God was coming to save Lot and his family. They didn't see this coming. They didn't know what was going on. They, Lot understood the despicable place that he was living in, but they had to take action. And so these men start to prepare Lot. You have to get out of here. Get anyone that you love, anyone that's a part of your family, and go. And don't stop once you get outside the city gates. What's going to happen here is going to be so spectacular and so overwhelming that if you don't go and flee far and go into the mountains, you will be destroyed because of the power that's going to come down and rain down in this place. And so Lot and his wife and his daughters, they go. And the part that is interesting to me is that God is telling them in verse 22, hurry and escape, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. The sun had risen upon the earth, and Lot entered Zor. And so Lot again asked, can we go, instead of going into the mountains, go into this city? And God said, yes, I'll allow that. And then verse 24, then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. And he overthrew those cities in all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. And God told them one thing, one thing, as you go, as you flee out of this place, what did he tell Lot's wife? What did he tell Lot and, and his daughters not to do? Anyone know? Don't look back. Whatever's happening back there, you are going away from that place. Don't look back. Don't look back. And yet as they went, verse 26, but his wife looked back behind him. And she became a pillar of salt. God is calling out to us. He gave me this vision. Just what this vision was that I talked to you guys about. This is it. We can't look back. We don't know why Lot's wife looked back. Was it the belongings of their household? We don't know. Could there have been daughters and son-in-laws left in the city and she was looking back after them, longing that they would have come? Possibly. Ultimately, we don't need to know. All we need to know is that God spoke. And the three that obeyed left that city. They were set free. This morning, we have that call on our lives. The chains that have been broken, where they had held you back before, no longer, no longer, that barrier is broken. 
We don't have to consider the feeling of what we used to feel before we would engage. We don't have to allow fear or the enemy's tactics to subdue us and overwhelm us anymore. Jesus has broken the barrier. His blood has set us free. His resurrection life is in us. We need to believe and go forward. This week, I was talking with several friends of mine, and uh, I wanted to share testimony of, of a couple of things that I heard this week of what God is doing. And this is not to say that we have to bring outside testimony. God is at work in us. I know that. Uh, Catherine, you could share your testimony after I'm done here, okay? I, I want us just to understand how powerful our God is, how much he does in our lives that we, number one, are undeserving of. Number two, we don't know how it happens or why it happens. That's okay. Just be glad in the Lord. And so my friend Daniel, uh, his family just got a, a, a new used vehicle. And he was using it at work, and he had to go back to his shop. And so he was in Streetsboro, and he's, he's coming down a hill. I don't know Streetsboro that well, but apparently there's a, a sizable hill coming down into Streetsboro. And as he is going down the hill, he sees an ambulance coming down the road toward him. And so he starts seeing everybody start drifting off to the sides and stopping. Well, the car in front of him does exactly that. It pulls over, and he was far enough away that he was just going to pull behind it. He starts to brake, and the pedal goes to the floor. No brakes. He tries everything, downshifting, he you know, presses the emergency brake in, everything reasonable, everything that he knew to do, he did. Emergency brake goes to the floor, boom, it's no good. Oh boy, it's go time, it's decision time, what do I do? He said, the thought went through my head in seconds, all these things were happening, do I smash into the Lincoln Continental in front of me? I could tell it was an elderly guy driving, I didn't want to hurt him, what do I do? He said at that moment, he decided, everybody is going off to the sides, I'm going right down the middle. And he takes a hard left, and he starts swerving around people. Ambulance is coming, I'm sure they're saying things in that ambulance, questioning, what is this guy doing? He said he, within inches of hitting the ambulance. So that passes. Great. Then he looks forward. There's a red light with stopped cars. What do I do now? He sees a side road. A red light, a side road, cars. He opts for the side road. Meanwhile, he said he caught out of the side of his peripheral a police car. <laughs> so he takes the side road. Now the police car is after him. Lights are going. Sirens are blaring. He's still got no brakes. And so he finally coasts to a stop, rolls down his window. He knows what's coming. I mean, he, again, his mind is going 1,000 miles a minute. You know, it's, what is this guy? This guy is going to come with his gun drawn. He's going to think that I'm purposely, you know, done these things. Police officer comes up. He says, sir, I, my brakes went out. Look at my light. The brake light's on. I've got nothing. I, I'm sorry. The police officer says, that was crazy. But you just avoided so many accidents there. In this situation, you did the right thing. I don't know what else to tell you said, the only thing is, I'm not going to give you a ticket, but you, you have to get this car towed. And so Daniel said, no problem, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. 
he said, as he was still sitting there shaking. And so he calls Preston Auto up here and, hey, we'll give you a rental car while your car is getting fixed. And he said to himself at that point, and he, and he later told me, he's like, you know, I don't understand because my, my father came and I could have ridden with him, but there was just something there that I didn't know why, but I felt like I was supposed to ride with the tow truck to, to go get this rental car. I mean, we, we could stop right there, and it's an amazing story of what God did, right? But yet, Daniel gets into the tow truck, and there's, there's a guy, you know, in his 40s, doing his job, and he's got a Christian radio station on. And Daniel hears it, and immediately he starts thinking, and he says, oh, are you a Christian? And the guy looks at him. And he goes, oh, the radio? No, no, I'm not a Christian. I just, I don't know, I just had this station on. It just seemed, you know, like a good station. And Daniel said immediately, he went into the mindset, hey, I'm a pretty seasoned Christian. I, I know what to do here. So he looks over and he goes, so are you saved? Do you know Jesus? And the guy looks at him again like, you just asked me that. No. And Daniel saw the look on the guy's face, and the Lord, like, clicked in his head, come on, don't just do your thing, ask me, talk to me, listen. And he said, at that point, the Holy Spirit fell on the cab of that truck, and he started opening up to this guy and sharing out of his life what, who God was and what he had done for him. It ends up that their two lives were, were very much paralleling. The things that this, this tow truck driver had done and the things that Daniel had done, it was almost like they were brothers, you know, going down a different road. And the guy asked Jesus to come into his heart, to come into his life, to, to save him, that he wanted to trust him, that he wanted to believe in him. And you should have seen Daniel's face as he's telling me this story. I mean, from, from low, a low point of, you know, my brakes went out, I, my family could have been driving in that car, they could have died, to the high point of exalting God, exalting Christ Jesus and all the things that he did. And then even giving him an amazing testimony. You see, Daniel continued to obey God and move forward. There were a lot of obstacles, a lot of thoughts, a lot of things going on throughout that, you know, five-minute scenario of going through traffic. What could have happened? All that stuff. It could have held him up. He could have thought about that the whole ride up from Streetsboro to Burton, right? How many of us have gotten stuck like that before? But he didn't. He allowed the Lord to snap him out of it. He allowed the spirit to move, and he obeyed. Talking to another friend of mine. This is a young, young guy, early 20s. I don't even know if he's 21 yet. I've watched him grow up. I, I had him in Christian club at the Cardinal High School, or middle school and high school. I've seen him here in this, in this sanctuary for Royal Rangers. He's helped us. He's led younger kids than him in Royal Rangers. He knew, in his mind, he thought that God was calling him to be a worship leader. And so he's been on Abundant Life's worship team. He's led at their youth group. He's been blessed. He has a, a great voice. He has ability. And then one day, one of his friends came up and said, Hey, Isaac, 
you got to come with me. Uh, there's this, this worship conference. I know I'm supposed to go. Would you go with me? And he started questioning because it was a girl. And he said, well, I can't do, I can't go with you. You're a girl. I mean, we can't, I've got issues with that. You know, I, I don't want to be alone in another city only with you. And she quickly laid out that everything would be okay. Separate rooms, you know, lots of people involved and things like that. And, and he said, okay, I'll go. Well, when he showed up, he quickly found out that this was not a worship conference. It was actually a conference about becoming a missionary. And so things from his past started to regenerate. You see, God had put a call on his heart early in his life to be a missionary, to evangelize, to witness. And he had, through that, that time, he had come to see how worship leaders acted, the things that happened with, with some worship teams and worship leaders, and, and his heart grew fond of that. And these are all things that he told me. He went to the conference. He heard what was being said. He felt like God was speaking to him. And he left the conference and he said, but Lord, you want me to be a worship leader. Why, why are these things happening? And so he kind of sidetracked it. He put it off, shelved it. Well, another conference comes around. And this time, people from the conference are calling him, hey, you're supposed to come to this conference. Ah, I don't know. Well, it worked out that he made, it, he made it happen again. He got there. And so he goes to this conference, and they start talking about the work that God's doing in different countries and, and the need that they have for men and women that are called to go. And it was at that conference that he said, all right, Lord, if this is what you want me to do, then I'll go. I'll do it. But somewhere in there, this whole worship leading thing came back again. And so as he left this conference again, he's like, all right, Lord, I'll be a missionary and a worship leader, right? That's what you want. Well, to, to give you the shorter story than, than I heard in the testimony is that Isaac is now a missionary to Nepal. He's giving his life. He laid down the call to be a worship leader. And you know what he told me? Mike, I laid it down because God was calling me to be a missionary through this whole time. I just picked up the worship leading thing because it's cool. I mean, I, and I love worshiping God. And I, I, wanted, I thought that's what he wanted me to do. But you see, in that process, he was going... But that chain that he had committed to, I'm only a worship, I can only be a worship leader. I can only be a worship leader, God. I can't do this because I'm supposed to be a worship leader. And God said, no, Isaac. I know you. I created you. I have made you. Be a missionary. But look, Lord, <laughs> I'm supposed to be a worship leader, Right? No, I've set you free. Oh, okay. I'll do it then, Lord. I'll do it. He's going with expectation that God will lead him as he obeys, whatever that means. Whatever that means. And as he goes and he hikes from village to village up in the mountains, and he sees all the things that God is doing, he gets to worship the Lord. We don't know what God is going to do unless we obey him. We don't know what God's going to do unless we recognize that you've broken that chain. I'm no longer held back any longer. I can go where you call me to go. I can go and do the things that you ask me to do. I can say what you tell me to say, Lord. 
Don't look back. Jesus said, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. God wants full commitment. Even in times when we stumble, he wants a full commitment to say, Lord, help me, forgive me, help me get up and keep walking. It's only in his power that we're able to do these things. Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. God can do all things. Philippians 3, verses 12 through 14, Paul says this, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brothers, I do not count myself to have apprehended But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward in those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. One thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward for those things which are ahead. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is ahead, our head, the head of this church, the body of Christ. And we are set free in him. He will direct us. I wasn't uh, planning on going here, but this morning as we were driving, Abram Abram said something, and as he was speaking about it, it was like the Lord said, this is something that you need to add into the message. And so turn with me to Acts 16. Verse 16 of Acts 16. Now as it happened, and we went into prayer, that a certain slave girl, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us and brought her masters much profit by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and us and, and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who pronounce to us the way of salvation. And she did this for many days, but Paul was greatly annoyed and finally turned and commanded the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus, Come out of her. And he came out that very hour. It was at that point that her masters got very aggravated. They took Paul to the authorities, and he and Silas were imprisoned. They were in stocks, their feet were fastened, they were in the inner prison. They were guarded heavily. And in verse 25, But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were opened. Everyone's chains were loosed. God is good. And the keeper of the prison, awakened from his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, he drew his sword and he was about to kill himself. And Paul called out in a loud voice saying, do not harm yourself for we are all here. Then he called for a light and ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas and he brought them out and he said, sirs, 
what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Sometimes those chains, the physical ones that hold us back, God has a purpose, even in them. As those chains were broken, released, the doors were opened, in our human nature, we would think, scramble, get out the door, get out of here. But God had a different plan. And by the Spirit of the Lord, not only did they stay, but the whole jail was kept intact in, in terms of prisoners, and God used it in a mighty way. And that jailer and his household believed in Jesus. Don't look back. Don't let the chains hold you back. Don't let the thought of an old chain hold you back. We have been freed. We have been freed. The old is gone. The new has come. Jesus has given us an overwhelming and perfect gift and his loving kindness. This morning, I believe that God, knowing all that he knows and doing all that he can do, wants us to live by faith and not by sight. That he has given us his spirit and he has given us gifts. He's given us each other His desire is that we can go in him. Loving him and loving one another. I was reading earlier this week one of the daily breads and uh, it was talking about a pilot and the first thing I thought of was Don and uh, it was, he was speaking of just the perfection that God brings, the work that only God can do. And, and he was reflecting about a perfect sky. And he said one of, the, one of his favorite aeronautical terms to describe a perfect sky is that they say, you can see to tomorrow. Now we know that physically, that's not possible for us. But God, who can see all things, can help us to see beyond our natural thought, our natural understanding, the natural outlook. But it comes in obeying him, listening and asking. And so this morning, we're going to end with prayer. We're going to do it a little bit different. I believe that as, as the body, there are different things, operations that we have in times of prayer. So this morning, if, if you're here and you're saying, man, I don't know if God is, is calling me to do anything beyond being here this morning and glorifying him and worshiping him, and I, I'm... I'm good. I, I mean, I, the Lord's not telling me anything that I need anything right now. So I'm going to ask for this. If that's you this morning, then we're going to form some small groups out here and just pray. Just pray for generally, for us as a body, that we can hear and obey and move forward in the way that the Lord is directing us. Maybe in that time, he'll give you something further to do. Maybe he'll put someone on your heart. As a group, it's okay. Just say, hey, this person came on my heart. Can we pray for this person as a group real quick? Or maybe someone in the group says, you know what? I actually, I need some prayer. Can you pray for me? That's, that's great. Let's do that. 
If you're sitting here this morning and you connect with this picture that God gave me, because I don't believe that he just gave it to me for no purpose this morning. He wanted me to share it. And so if you're dealing with that, where, where maybe even last week or through this week or this morning, God said, I've set you free, but you're still letting these chains hold you back. Or maybe he's saying, get set free from those chains. Then come up here. We'd love to pray for you. If nobody comes up here, then we'll disperse among the groups. Okay? But let's just be free in what the Lord wants us to do. And if there's even a slight hesitation of, I don't know, is there something holding me back? Just come up and we'll pray about it. No fear. Let's not be weird here. Let's just be okay with what God wants to do. So why don't we just form some groups out here? You guys take charge. Let the Lord direct and lead us as we pray together. When you feel you're done, you can leave. But if you want to come up and get prayed over, if there's anything further that you just, we'll go for it.